Welcome to Micron's hardware. Machinist X99G7 is a rather unique motherboard. It comes in M80X form factor, so you can put it in small builds, but it has four memory slots for DDR3 memory. And these memory slots are working in quad-channel memory configuration. So far, it is the only X99 motherboard from China which came in such a small form factor with quad-channel DDR3 memory support. Thus, many of you were interested in this motherboard, and I have ordered it for my review as soon as I have seen it on AliExpress. Unfortunately, packages from China to Sweden are traveling rather long, and sometimes my packages are delayed somewhere at customs, or I don't know where, and now we have what we have. On YouTube you can already find multiple different videos about X99G7, and I just have got mine for testing. Still, as they say, later is better than never, so here I am with my opinion about Machinist X99G7 motherboard. In short, Machinist X99G7 is exactly the same motherboard as Machinist X99RS9, but with DDR3 memory configuration. Thus, for detailed results about every possible port and every possible feature, please follow my Machinist X99RS9 review. Everything I tell about that motherboard is also applicable to Machinist X99G7. The BIOS is also intercompatible between these two motherboards. Still, Chinese would not be Chinese if everything would be that simple. My Machinist X99G7 came to me with a defect. Unfortunately, the first PCI Express X1 slot is simply not working. And another problem I have got is that once I install Windows 11 and attempt to install drivers for the chipset and for the Intel Xeon CPUs, a crash happens and the updates and the drivers are simply not installed and are completely ignored. It is a shame, but I did not have enough time to investigate this problem. I had to give away this motherboard to the new owner. That's why I had to install Windows 10, which worked absolutely fine, with the only one exception that the first PCI Express slot X1 didn't work. Everything else on this motherboard worked and functioned exactly the same as Machinist X99 RS9. Additionally, I would like to specify that Machinist X99G7 does not support DDR3-2133 memory speed. As of right now, there are only two X99 motherboards from China which can go up to DDR3-2133. The first one is Huanan x 99 tf and the second one is Huanan x 99 t 8 Every other motherboard which supports DDR3 memory tops out at DDR3-1866, and Machinist X99G7 is not an exception. So this is pretty much my review of Machinist X99G7, but you would say that the video is not complete and rather boring. That's why I'm going to test a Xeon E5 2666V3 and tell you my opinion if you shall put it on G7 or it is a bad idea. Xeon E5 2666V3 is a rather unique CPU. It is not official Intel CPU, but it has 10 cores, 20 threads, and maximum turbo frequency up to 3.5 GHz. Sounds awesome, right? And what's good, you can buy it for about 55 euros from AliExpress at the moment. What's more awesome is that this CPU works with DDR4 and DDR3 memory, and the maximum TDP is 135 Watt, which means that the TDP is not going to restrict our CPU frequency, and the CPU is going to hold 3.5 GHz on all 10 cores once Turbo Boost Unlock is implemented. Everyone who watched my Machinist X99 RS9 review probably know that this motherboard has a pathetic three-phase VRAM. Of course, there is a doubler on each phase which turns a single phase into two phases and some people will claim that it is a six-phase VRAM, but the reality is that the VRAM or PWM controller itself has only four phases and only three phases out of those four are actually implemented on the motherboard. So it is a rather pathetic three-phase VRAM with rather simple or rather weak MOSFETs. In my review of X99 RS9, I said that this VRAM is not enough for a 12-core EFI 2678V3. That CPU has TDP of just 120 Watt, and EFI 2666V3 has TDP of 135 Watt. Thus, you probably guessed it right. This VRAM is not enough for EFI 2666V3. Still, I have done my stress test using ADA64. Running stress test for half an hour, I have got temperatures around 70 degrees Celsius. For the next half an hour, I have added another 120 mm fan, which was blowing air straight onto the VRM zone. This has improved the values even further. 
So, seems like the VRM is just enough for this CPU. Unfortunately, no. Right now it is a rather cold winter outside and I like to keep my room chill because I work better when it is not hot. The ambient temperature in my room is somewhere between 18 and 19 degrees Celsius. That's why we are getting these good values for the VRM temperatures of our Machinis X99 G7. If you would like to see a bit more realistic test results and see how this VRM is actually performing during not hot but ok summer, please check out my Machinist X99 RS9 review. There you will see that the VRAM is not enough for 120W TDP E52678 V3. With this in mind, let's go into some test results. As usual, let's take a look at the memory performance using ADA64 memory and cache speed benchmark. Here we are comparing DDR3-1866 with E5-2666 V3 and DDR4-1866 with the Xeon E5-2640 V3. It is a well-known fact that DDR3 at the same speed as DDR4 provides better memory bandwidth, thus we get better memory read, write and copy speeds, but the memory latency is slightly better with the DDR4 configuration in this particular instance. Most likely it is because my DDR3 memory modules from Corsair are not the best. In my case I was not able to tighten memory timings any tighter than the official XMP profile. If you get some good quality DDR3, especially DDR3 ECC registered memory from Samsung, you shall be able to get slightly better memory latency than what I have here. When it comes to the synthetic benchmarks, everything as expected. E5-2666 has 10 cores, 2640 has 8 cores, one has 3.4 GHz frequency, another one has 3.5 GHz frequency. So, when all cores are used, E5-2666 comes on top with a convincing win. When a single core is used, E5-2666 again comes on top, but the gap between the CPUs is rather meaningless. So let's move on to the gaming results. Unfortunately here I also cannot present you any interesting data. Both of the CPUs are pretty much similar. Nevertheless, I have tested all my usual games and going to quickly go through each game and report you the FPS numbers. For crying you don't, here the gap between the two Xeons is just 4 FPS. 2640 gives us 55 and 76 FPS, 2666 gives a bit more, 58, 80 FPS. Far Cry 6, and here we have a huge difference of just 1 FPS. 2640 renders 3579 FPS, 2666 gives 3680 FPS. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and yet again the gap is less than 5 FPS. 2640 gives 2157 FPS, 2666 2261 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a bit more demanding on the CPU performance, and here the gap grows to the astronomical 6 FPS. 7421 FPS for 2640 and 8027 FPS for 2666. Watch Dogs Legion is even more CPU demanding and here the gap of 9 FPS is somehow meaningful. E5 2640v3 renders 6185 FPS, 2666v3 improves the values to 6894 FPS. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Age on average renders much more frames, so the gap is also bigger. In this particular case it's 20 FPS. 2640 gives us 273, 341 FPS and 2666, 290, 360 FPS. Performance in Immortals Phoenix Rising is about the same, 1662 FPS for 2640 and 1665 FPS for 2666. F1 2021 also renders about 200 FPS on average, so the gap is also about 20 FPS. 2640 renders 183, 229 FPS, 2666 is slightly faster, 203, 249 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the last tested game and here the gap again fails to reach even 10 FPS. 2640 renders 7316 FPS, 2666 is 6 FPS better, 7622 FPS. So, as expected, 2666 V3, which has two extra cores and slightly higher CPU clock frequency, gives us better results in every game. But will you be able to see this difference in the real world? Most likely not. I have done my tests with powerful AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card at 1080p screen resolution. How many of you will be buying this expensive graphics card play at 1080p 
With such a cheap CPU as a Xeon i5 2640v3, most likely none of you, it's only me who is doing this test to show you the real CPU performance. In real world, when people are pairing i5 2640 and 2666 with GPUs such as GTX 1060, 1070, 1080, or even RTX 2070, the gap between these two CPUs in games will be next to non-existent. Now, the power consumption is yet another reason why I believe that X99 G7 plus E5 2666v3 is a bad combination. Testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla system equipped with E5 2640v3 and DDR4 memory consumes about 345 watt. Under the same conditions, system equipped with E5 2666v3 with DDR3 memory consumes about 390 watts. Running Blender Benchmark system with E5 2640v3 consumes about 161 watts. Under the same test, E5 2666v3 consumes about 230 watt. As you can see, the power consumption gap is rather big, but here are a few factors that you need to keep in mind. First, the Blender Benchmark was completed faster with 2666 because the CPU has two extra cores. Then DDR3 memory consumes significantly more power compared to DDR4, and the VRM or power delivery system drops its efficiency under load. So, for example, if you have VRM loaded at 80%, power efficiency will stay at this level. Then you increase load to 100%, efficiency of your VRM will drop. That's why the power consumption gap might be this big between these two CPUs, while someone might think that the power consumption difference between these two V3 CPUs shall be negligible. It is also important to mention that Schwanway X99S, which was used with E5 2640 V3, has slightly better VRM MOSFETs than Machinist X99 G7, which was used with E5 2666 V3. Maybe it also plays its role, unfortunately I did not have time to test E5 2666 V3 with the DDR4 memory. Most likely you have already guessed it, I do not recommend Machinist X99 G7 plus E5 2666v3 combination. If you're looking to save some money instead of buying LJ1200 or AMD AM4 platform, then E5 2640v3 is still the best option. This CPU can be paired with the same Machinist X99 RS9 or some other motherboard such as Schwanway X99S. In games, the difference between 2640 and 2666 is negligible. But if you need a powerful CPU such as E5 2666v3 or E5 2678v3, then please buy a proper motherboard with a somehow decent VRM. For example, Juan Andrea X99, BD3, AD3, BD4, AD4, TF, F8, and T8. With this, I'm going to conclude this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational. Bye-bye!